Emergency trade alert. Front run the CPI data releasing next Tuesday. Immediate gains ahead. Buy these five stocks now. Our high risk portfolio has a year to date return of 27.88%. This is outperforming the S&P 500 7% year to date return by 298%. We'll be taking big profits in two weeks or less then rotating into three high ROI defensive plays. Now our total return for the high risk growth portfolio is 290% since 2021. And compared to the S&P 500's 11.74% return, we're outperforming the market by 2,374%. Here's our current trade alert recommendation. All members follow a unit of investment. Each unit currently costs $1,992. If you're a member and you're getting our emails, just go to your email and click the link. You can log into the membership area, type in how much money you want to invest, and it'll automatically calculate out the ratios. Currently, the ratio is 20 shares of UVXY, our crash insurance product, coming in just below 5% of the portfolio. We're long treasuries on the long end, betting that interest rates will fall for the next two years. 49 shares of ticker TMF, that's your TLT times three. That's the defensive side. On the offensive side, we've been racking up big profits in the last few weeks in coin, Coinbase, nine shares representing 32% of the portfolio. And then we have eight shares of FNGU. These are the big tech giants times three. It's very similar to the QQQ, but it's leveraged times three and concentrated into only 10 leading tech stocks that get all the call option volume. That's why it greatly outperforms the bull markets. Our commodity hedge is currently natural gas boil, which continues to get clobbered at 21 shares. And this is gonna become a more important play as the year progresses. So this is looking at uh, futures contracts on US natural gas prices, ticker boil 21 shares. If you were to have 10 units, you'd have 200 shares of UVXY, 490 shares of TMF, 90 coin, 8, 80 FNGU and 210 boil. Here's a look at our track record. In 2021, we had a 233% return. 2022, we had as high as a 55% return. Gave a lot of that back in the back end of the, the year, September, November, December had some drawdown. We closed the year out down 12. This year we're already up 27.78% with a 14.6% return in January and an 11.5% return in February. We've had as high as a 20% return in February. And this is a really good setup all the way to summer but we will be making some adjustments in late February or early March to protect the gains and get ready for potential volatility. Now you can replace COIN or FNGU, the growth play or tech play with Rebel Dividends, a private equity offering we have, which is sitting on an outstanding 104% year to date return. Call Dean to learn more about this product at 505-322-7515. Okay, here's the latest data of the week that I wanted to, to highlight before we jump into charts and break down the, tr the trade alert uh, per, uh, per play. U.S. inflation is tracking the 1970s, remarkably close so far. Um, I'm not sure we're going to have new highs in inflation uh, as we did through the 70s, but I am expecting something like this, which is for inflation to fall for the next four to six months. And then as the debt ceilings raised and the Chinese impulse plays, perhaps the war comes to an end and Europe boots back up, uh, that we're gonna see another energy inflation scare uh, somewhere in the third or fourth quarter. So we're gonna start building into that position into summer. Wage growth is peaked. This is the main thing the Fed was worried about. Last Friday, we had a half a million supposed jabs added, all part-time jobs, 10,000 full-time jobs removed from the economy. Uh, all the big paying jobs in finance and tech are melting away and being replaced with cheap service jobs. That's why we're seeing the wage uh, pressure fall. This is what the Fed wanted to see, a strong economy, no recession, and inflation coming down. Beautiful setup 
Jeffrey Gunlack says, here is the yield change in the treasury markets over the last three months. Uh, and basically they're all down except for the federal funds rate up 75. Message seems clear. So Jeffrey Gunlack saying uh, we need to stop hiking rates and that yields are going to continue falling. He's saying actually this is the best period of time he's ever seen in his entire career to go long bonds. They call him the bond king. He's a billionaire uh, primarily from, from that market. Let's look at the one-year U.S. Treasury. It's the highest since 2007. Uh, we've probably got 25 to 50 basis points of rate hikes, and then that's it. Then we're going to pause, and then the market's going to most likely rally until the yield curve steepens. That's where we're going to get really scared. We're nowhere near a steepening of the yield curve currently. This is the U.S. implied terminal rate. So we're currently at 4.75. This is predicting we're going to have two more 25 basis point hikes, uh, which would mean March and then May. Uh, I'm thinking only March. But even if we're pausing in May, that's perfectly fine for the way we're looking at markets. PPI, producer price index, has been leading the CPI. Uh, this is predicting a big drop in CPI coming up next Tuesday. They've also realigned how they measure the CPI. And I think it's going to be in a way that makes it look lower based on counting data from after the war began, which is when we had skyrocketing oil costs and some of the worst inflation data. So I think the CPI is going to come out very, very good for us next Tuesday. And we're going to want to take some profits off the table from that reaction about a week later. Here is another way to predict inflation. It's looking at the money supply, M2, year-over-year -year growth. And this is looking at a crash in the PPI and CPI uh, for another 12 to 16 months. Now, again, notice there's a little jump up and then another ramp down. That's about when I'm expecting to see uh, per perhaps another interest rate uh, related volatility event. So when they increase the debt ceiling, which will probably be around June, Janet Yellen is going to start issuing a lot of debt and taking a lot of money out of markets and making inflation expectations rise, interest rates rise, and it'll probably revalue growth assets lower. So we're going to be uh, very cautious around that period of time. Here's some data. If stocks are down the previous year, this trifecta is very bullish. Trifecta of the Santa Claus rally, first five days of the year, and January, all green from 1950 to current. So if the previous year was down and the first five years of January were up, uh, your average return for the year was 28% with a 100% track record. So I like those stats. Uh, how has the SP 500 performed once the Fed hit pause? Not pivot. They pivot when there's a crash. They pause when things look great. And the returns after that are 104% in 84, 39% in 88, 166% in 94, 11% in 2000, 28% in 06, and 44% in 18, 2018. So some of the durations of those bull markets were up to three to four years. Uh, the shortest one was during the dot-com bubble. Obviously, that wasn't the end of the dot-com crash. Um, they had to continue raising rates after that. Uh, and then the rest of those were pretty clean bull markets until the yield curve was again steepening, which we're not doing right now. Now, what's going to happen uh, once inflation is clearly falling and the Fed's pausing, more money is going to flood into assets than you have ever seen in your lifetime. The amount of cash sitting in money market funds collecting small amounts of interest is at an all-time high in history, around $5 trillion. So when we look at this, the red line uh, and the black line are looking at essentially the liquidity supply. So we've just came into the lowest liquidity in decades. And the likelihood here is we're bottoming out and we're gonna ramp right back up to maximum liquidity. And we can see where that liquidity is gonna come from. The money markets have 5 trillion, reverse repo has 2 trillion, Janet Yellen's sitting on 550 billion, Japan and China are printing quickly, and every government at globally is running deficits. So the money's about to flood into these assets. Time to get greedy and just have the right hedges in place. The key hedge for us will be oil and gas and the VIX uh, for, for the volatility we see coming in. Uh, but the big profits, to be clear, are betting that interest rates are gonna go back towards zero 
in about two and a half years. This is going to drive tech stocks and digital currencies sky high, as well as the, the levered bond product we have. We're going to be using commodities and the VIX to reduce volatility uh, and smooth out the return. Here's a look at the central bank's balance sheets. And you can see over 2021, everybody was pulling money out of the system. Uh, now the reverse is happening. Now that it's clear the Fed is about to pause, all the other governments get ready to print money because they can get away with it without crashing their currencies. Now in one chart, here's why you want to be long digital currencies, uh, commodities, and anything that's a uh, an asset with a limited supply. So the U.S. government spending visualized, this is not going to change anytime soon. And the, at the rate we're racking up interest on debt, it's about to go hyperbolic. So until we get some different people in charge of the government that want to balance the budget, the way we're positioned is going to be extremely profitable. Uh, and so we're looking at a $1.38 trillion deficit this year, growing to about $2.2 trillion in the next decade. Now, the China reopening seems to be mostly uh, on the internal side, not a big manufacturing boom, because we're looking at these metals. And the, the main one that they manipulate higher uh, due to demand is copper. And you can see copper has been uh, rolling over since the bounce in January. So until we see copper really starting to perk back up and skyrocket to the upside, pretty darn confident that deflation will be the theme and that we want to be long growth via COIN, uh, ETHE, GBTC, FNGU, TMF. Those are tickers are going to do the best. Once we think inflation is coming back and the economy is running hot, which again, I think we'll be able to spot in an instance by watching copper, uh, we'll start to get more bullish on the commodity plays via NRGU, BOIL, um, and then potentially the UVXY in case we think it's going to upset the bond market. Another look at the Chinese opening in the German and Japanese exports, nothing crazy here. So uh, there's no big boom coming out of China that's going to cause inflation currently. The Fed typically paused or started to cut when ISM fell below 50 in the past. We've done that. So we're right at that pause moment. I think they'll do 25 basis points next month and then probably pause uh, if the labor market cools off a little bit. Secretary Janet Yellen says our economy added over 500,000 jobs last month. We're seeing the lowest unemployment rate in more than 50 years. And I see a path for our economy to remain strong as inflation continues to decline. Goldilocks situation here. Yield curve versus economic cycle indicators. So yield curve, the 10-year minus the two-year in black and the unemployment rate in blue. Uh, just to be clear, all the recessions are marked by fast rising unemployment. That's just not happening. There's no signs of that happening. We have Goldilocks conditions that are absolutely perfect for markets right now. When the yield curve starts to steepen and the unemployment rate starts to rise, uh, that'll be our signal to get out of stocks and go all in on bonds, UVXY, and get ready for a crash. I think we're at least 12 months out from that. Goldman Sachs now says 25% odds of recession in the next 12 months, well below consensus. That's what I see as well. Uh, something, some, Two things to be concerned about, uh, used vehicles, which was leading the inflation front and then also leading the crash, uh, had a bounce back, the highest since, uh, the highest jump in a month since something like two years. So could just be a small bounce. We'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, another place we've seen some stability coming in is the housing market. We've seen a little bit of price stability there, uh, which is good. We don't want to go into the Great Depression because the Fed's hiked rates. Uh, and so far, it looks like they've done a great job on uh, killing the inflation without killing the economy here. Now, the big run up has been short covering. Treasury market has huge shorts in it still that haven't been beat out. Uh, and that's because the economy looks really strong. So people are picking stocks over bonds right now. Here's the aggregate treasury net spec positioning. If the Fed overdoes the tightening, uh, yields are going to collapse. The economy is going to collapse and treasury is going to skyrocket. So we, we want to hold on to this position in the safe growth portfolio. It's over half the portfolio and the high risk. It's a quarter. 
there's still about two trillion dollars of personal savings that was handed out from the government during the lockdown period. Uh, so even though we're seeing credit cards jump up, we're starting to see some more uh, non-payments on the bottom portion of the used car market. Overall, credit looks really good. Uh, the amount of credit the the bottom half of the population is holding in the wealth perspective uh, is only about 25% of their of their total net worth. So it's not at extreme levels. During the the lockdown era, it was up in the 40% range. So still lots of room for credit to grow, lots of savings, tons of money in the market. And we've got everybody grabbing a job. Maybe it's two jobs, uh, but they're still getting these bills paid. Okay, let's go through the portfolio one by one. Coin in the last month is up 79%. We nailed it on that one. Over the past year, it's down 63%. Huge room to go up on coin. ETHE. One of our favorite plays, up 31% in the last month, down 42% in the past year. Has to break above 4,500 to get to new highs. If you bought and held through every rally and every crash from conception, you're sitting on 122,000% return on our favorite growth asset, which Rebel Dividends gives you three times leverage into. And again, this is just the main reason why we like digital currencies. Uh, we're looking at the unstoppable debt growth globally, sitting at $252 trillion from the 70s. It was only $100 trillion. Uh, so in another 50 years, we're going to be at least $500 trillion of debt, maybe close to $1,000 trillion. I don't even know what the name for that is. This is the government's own projection of its deficit in the next decade, going from $1 trillion. And again, the this is underestimating it because the latest data is predicting 1.3 trillion for 2023, growing to 2.3 trillion by 2032. Where is the deficit money coming from? Printing cash. The bull cycle for bonds and digital currencies uh, is looking to peak out just on time in 2025. This is predicting BTC hitting $200,000 this cycle. So again, if you want to get involved with our program, call Dean now at 505-322-7515. Commodities, buy 21 shares of Boyle. This has been a play that's beat us up in the last month. We're still up a lot, obviously. And I'm getting ready to add to this. For those of you asking if it's going to zero, absolutely not. It's one of the key energy sources globally. Uh, places like India are locking up long-term deals and expect their use of this to double or triple this decade. Uh, if you listen to the State of the Union speech, the president said we're going to be using oil and coal for a long time, recognizing uh, that we can't just abandon those products. And so absolutely not. We got hit by warm weather and really good uh, prevention of use in Europe. Uh, they were scared they're going to freeze this winter. So they shut down the manufacturing industrial sector and they put all sorts of restraints on their populace to reduce this usage. But now it's at cheap prices, uh, perhaps prices that are unprofitable for the producers. So I'm expecting these surpluses to get drawn down in the next three months, and then for a nice rally uh, from there. So I think the bottom is very close to being in for boil. We're gonna slowly add into this all summer and then get ready to take profits into next winter, most likely. NRGU, very similar story lining up, waiting to watch copper. Once we see copper stabilize and start going up quickly, that's gonna be the leading indicator telling us to go much more aggressive in boil and NRGU. So really paying attention to that. Uh, but NRGU, you can see, has had nice, nice upward trend, a good pullback. I'm uh, just being a little more patient to get that back in the portfolio. NRGU is the 10 U.S. oil and gas companies times three, while Boyle is playing spot price futures in LNG in the U.S. So you're playing around with futures contracts. That's why the price goes skyrocketing up or down so quickly, because it's a leveraged futures product. Here's a look at oil. Uh, we can see in the last month, it's had a run up, a crash, and a and somewhat of a recovery. Uh, but in the last year, it's down nine and a half percent. So it's still trying to stabilize that price in the 80 to 90 range. So we're being patient on that. 
if there's going to be a big stock crash, it would most likely be uh, due to nuclear war in Europe, which is unfortunately uh, heading that way. Our president promised we'd never send tanks, never sending tanks. Next thing you know, they'll be sending jets. Uh, so that's definitely something very concerning. Uh, more likely would be a risk of an inflation run up in the second half of the year. If we see the inflation running back up, that's going to upset the bond market and create another leg down, depending on how bad that inflation is. Uh, so UVXY is pretty cheap, and we'll start adding to that again as we haven't touched it for a long time, maybe a year now. Uh, it's UVXY is cheap at 507. It's down 18.5% in the last month. It's down 69% in the last year. In the lockdown, when the whole world freaked out and the S&P 500 fell 25% in a month, UVXY went up 1,000%. So if you have 10% of your account in at the bottom of a, a rally in this asset of that magnitude, the rest of your portfolio could go to zero and you'd be even because 10% times 1,000% uh, turns into a doubling of your total account or back to even. Okay, this is the 2008 analog leading into the 2009 crash. Uh, we had a spike in volatility, came back down, and then you got the big, big fear. Uh, so again, I don't see this happening this next two quarters, uh, but if we start to see copper going up too quickly, that could be a sign of issues, uh, issues ahead. Or if we saw wages rising too quickly again or something of that nature. At this point, I just don't have any data to support inflation 2.0 being a problem anytime soon. And I think when the debt ceiling is lifted, it'll be more likely to occur uh, which won't happen until around June. Bonds, buy 49 shares of TMF, the deflation hedge. This is the TLT leverage times three. In the last month, it's flat, down 1%. In the last year, it's down 60%. Here's your TLT, so you can see a comparison, flat and down 23%. Now, other bond markets we're not playing, but these feed the stock market. LQD, investment grades, doing good, flat, uh, and only down 12% in the last year. The junk bonds flat in the last month and down 8% in the last year. So we're seeing the bond market stabilizing. That's where we're getting such a good rally in, in financial assets. Now, on these charts, it's the opposite. So if you see these charts going up. That means the bond market's losing value. The three-month uh, is up 2% in the last month, and it's up 1,174% in the last year. So that's why we had so much problems last year. Uh, but as you can see, it's flatlining now in the last month. In the last year, it's crashing. Up means it's crashing. Flat means it's stabilizing. The two-year similar setup, uh, actually uh, a little bit of a rise on the two-year. That's because the half a million jobs print pissed off the bond market. Uh, but again, that, that report's a little funky with people working part-time jobs, total jobs, uh, full-time jobs decreased, and wages are falling. So overall, I think that was more of a bullish uh, print, but the bond market certainly reprised. You can see it jumped from 4.1 to 4.45. Uh, so predicting higher rates ahead from the Fed. Over the past year, it's up 196% and hitting new highs just in the last few days. The 10 year is saying we got problems ahead if they keep doing this. Uh, so the 10 year and longer ones uh, have better data. Flat over the last five days. Uh, 2% return in the past month, and over the last year, uh, only up 64%. On the 30 year, it's actually uh, flat over the last month. So the longer you go in the duration spectrum, uh, the less, less crashing we're seeing. So it's really the front end predicting the Fed's gonna force rates higher via the federal funds rate. Lumber futures down 62% in the past year. Uh, copper futures, here's that chart. So you can see it started off hot with the China news and it's rolled over already. Uh, so until we see this really rocketing to the upside, uh, not a lot of reasons to think the CPI is going to go against us being long tech and digital currencies. Baltic dry index down 69%. That's cost of shipments of commodities across continents uh, back to historical levels. Uh, wheat futures, we are seeing some problems there, so definitely some food shortages. Uh, but to, to mix that headline up, the big meat producers are having too much meat right now. So protein 
inflation is not there, although we're seeing 2% gain in wheat over the last month. Over the last year, it's down 4.8%. This is the yield curve inverted by 80, uh, by 0.8. So this means the two year has a higher interest rate than the 10 year, typically marks the peak in interest rates. And it's when this goes positive sharply that we get worried about heading into a recession uh, with unemployment rising. Here's the long-term chart, the two-year, 10-year um, spread. And again, when it starts to rise, that's when you are leading into an infl uh, a recession. US dollar, we're not in this at 103.29. I expect this could fall to 90 uh, in this decade. And that's when you're gonna see uh, digital currencies hit massive valuations. So this is a great setup for emerging markets, for bonds, for tech stocks, and for digital currencies with the DXY way at this level. Here's the chart over a year. You can see it peaked out 112.15, crashed down to 100. We bounced up to 103. And I believe with a falling inflation and a pivoting Fed while other, while the ECB is going to keep raising rates, uh, we're headed to drive the dollar much lower which again could cause the inflation to go back up because it's going to make energy costs go back up. Here's the big picture of the dollar. Uh, every crisis, uh, the high is getting lower and the low is getting lower. It's because the debt bubble from the U.S. is becoming absolutely ridiculous uh, with $31 trillion of debt outstanding. Uh, and that's not even including all the uh, benefits we owe our voter base. So this is the big trend, and we're talking about massive profits and things like BTC, ETH, hitting 90 on the DXY. Uh, imagine what prices you'd be looking at if over a decade or two, you can drive it to the 80 range once again or lower. And again, we're, we're until we start balancing our budget and reducing the deficit, uh, that's really the trend that's driven this to have lower lows in each problem period uh, and higher highs. Okay, the Japanese yen, uh, which was the big story, is stabilizing and has stopped bleeding. So if this is going up, it's losing value. So the big short on the Japanese yen and bond market could be short squeeze soon. And then the Chinese currency also stabilizing. All this means is those countries can now print money without worrying about their currency falling off a cliff. All right, next play are the tech stocks leverage times three with FNGU. This is up 85% in the last month. We've loaded up on that, done very well. Uh, the, over the last year, it's still down 62%, a long ways to go on this. Some index returns, S&P 500 up 5% in the last month, down 6% in the last year. Still has a lot of room to go if yields are falling. NASDAQ up 11% in the last month, down 11.8 in the previous year. Emerging markets having a pullback in the last five days, but it's flat over the last month and only down 16.97% in the last year. Starting to outperform to start off in November and January, uh, but then the bond market got upset because the US labor data is still too strong. So as soon as the uh, labor data really cools off and the CPI is really falling quickly, that's when you're going to probably see emerging markets outperform the S&P 500. This chart's showing you that every other cycle, the emerging markets outperform. Um, and typically, the performances of emerging markets when they outperform are shorter. So this could be a quick little two to three year bull market ahead. And once the yields fall and stabilize and the DXY stabilizes, so we're going to want to take some big profits and look at a new strategy. Uh, Europe up 3% uh, over the last month and only down 6% over the last year. What war? <laughs> uh, uranium we're not in right now, uh, but we could be getting back into it this summer. Safe growth, most likely 1% return in the last month and flat over the last year. Rare earth metals, lithium for batteries, up 9.9% .9 in the last month and down 11% in the last year, probably another summer play. We're not in it currently. One of the big players, Amazon up 12% in the last five uh, last month, but down 34% in the past year. So a lot of room to go still. And again, what we're really predicting is yields fall, which makes the valuation of stocks go up. 
14.5% return on Apple in the last month, down 10% in the last year. Alibaba down 5% in the last month and only down 13% in the past year. So it's stabilizing. Again, it needs that dollar to fall for it to really rally. Uh, Baidu, another Chinese conglomerate, up 14.9% in the last month, down 4.5% in the last year. Facebook or Meta up 40% in the past month. Wow, what a what a rise. That's one of the biggest jumps of a mega company like this ever. And down 15% in the last year. Google up 9.9% in the last month, down 26% in the past year. They gave up a lot uh, due to their AI bot not making sense live, I guess, competing with Microsoft. Microsoft's killing it up 16.7%. They bought out ChatGPT, all the hype right now. And you can see it's only down 8% in the past year now. Netflix up 13% in the last month, down 7% in the last year, just screaming up since last summer. NVIDIA. Killing it this year, 39.8% return. Again, this is what we get access to with FNGU times three, down only 6.46% the past year. Tesla rocketing up 10% in the last five days, smashing up 63% in the past month, uh, and again, down 29% in the last year. Let's look at some big banks. They can be a canary in the coal mine. JP Morgan up 4% in the last month, only down 6.8% in the past year. Bank of America going up 7% last month, down 23% in the past year. Uh, another critical company, Taiwan Semiconductors, up 17% the past month, down 21% the past year. Call Dean now at 505-322-7515 for a free coaching call to get started with Portfolio Builder. Okay, here's our disclaimer. I'm going to go ahead and look for questions. Okay, so UVXY is not in my husband's 401k. I would try to build that position out in a cash account the best you can. Do whatever it is you need to do to get that money uh, to maintain the UVXY position in a cash account. There's no alternative in an inflationary environment. Typically, we'd bet on bonds in an inflationary environment uh, as an alternative to UVXY, but we're worried uh, that inflation is gonna come roaring back and that that's gonna be the cause of volatility. So there's no replacement for UVXY. You could buy out of the money put options, but I don't provide um, help on that. UVXY is like out of the money put options that are rolling over on a weekly basis. That's why it loses value so quickly because you're gonna get extreme returns if there's high volatility. Okay, so very good. Uh, so Tuesday, I'm expecting a good CPI print. I'm expecting the market to rally for maybe a week after that. And then I'm gonna take some profits off the table and roll it into Boil NRGU UVXY is really what I'm seeing coming down the pipeline. Um, not so confident we're gonna make a ton of money on Boil or NRGU, but we're really light and I wanna have that hedge to protect our growth stocks. Gary says, what effect do you see from China? So yeah, we looked at it. Uh, China's not causing commodities to go up. So that's the main thing I'm watching. Copper futures. As soon as we see copper futures going up, it's that chart. Uh, that's going to be our warning sign that other commodities are most likely going to go up. So here we're looking at China reopening, and we're looking at the performance of zinc, copper, nickel, aluminum. And they're all going down. So... So yeah, second we see copper rallying and breaking in new highs, we need to worry about rates. It'll probably, you know, we need to be reacting to that sooner. So we're going to be proactive in building up those commodity positions into this pullback, um, expecting it to probably bottom by summer ahead of the debt ceiling getting increased. There's also about a six month lag when China does something that it hits uh, markets. So that would be this summer. So this summer is lining up to be a potential uh, time to reduce exposure to bonds, tech stocks, and to get very heavy in commodities. But will markets front run this? So that's why we don't want to be too late to the game. So my expectation is low CPI Tuesday, tech stocks, digital currencies, bonds do really good for uh, into the next week. And then we'll start pulling some profits and putting that into UVXY. Uh, boil in our GU. If I'm wrong, uh, then probably 
UVXY goes up and everything else goes down, including bonds. So if the inflation's bad, everything's just gonna sell off, most likely. Because it's gonna mean the Fed has to hike rates way higher and push the whole curve up. Because um, a lot of people believe they have to, to push the interest rates above the inflation rate. Uh, Stanley Druckmiller has been famous for coming up saying, we've never gotten inflation over seven below to drop without the federal funds rate going above that. So that would mean they have to jack it up to seven from 4.75 currently. So that'd be obviously really bad and not, not something anyone's predicting. Uh, but again, with oil, natural gas, copper all falling and food uh, and rent, there's not a chance. CPI is not gonna be jumping up on us this Tuesday. Okay, beautiful guys. So uh, remember, we have a dividend and webinar for Rebel Dividends coming up. Um, this can replace your, uh, it, it replaces the triple Q, it replaces F and G, it replaces COIN, ETHE, GBTC. All of those can be replaced with Rebel Dividends and get far better returns with the weekly dividend. What it doesn't replace um, are your bonds, TMF, it doesn't replace your oil, doesn't replace your NRGU, and it doesn't replace your UVXY. Those ones you need to keep in your stock trading account. Beautiful. So I'm continuing to try to get the presentation as concise as possible and not have too much uh, repetitiveness. Um, so we slimmed it down quite a bit. I can still see a few more slides. I'll probably slim out next week. But yeah, I think we'll be taking some Profits, not all. We're not going to sell all of our positions in tech uh, in two weeks. We just want to rebalance and get that exposure much less. I'm actually thinking around summer is when the tech rally is going to fade away for a short period of time uh, due to the debt ceiling increasing and the tr Chinese credit impulse coming back on and potentially Europe coming back on if, if there's a truce. Uh, in Europe. So we'll see how that escalates or de-escalates. Okay, beautiful. Well, thank you guys so much and we'll see you back next week.